Okay, so as I've noticed in my past videos, I've talked too much in the beginning, so I'm just going to dive right into it. This is a subtractor. It's the other half, well, not technically the other half, because there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of parts to an ALU, but these are the two I'm going to be focusing on my Silit series, the adders, which are right now over there, and the subtractor, because, well. Uh, now, I might be a little slow with the subtractor because I just learned how to do this today. My computer does not use subtractor. So, let's begin. First of all, you need um, a NOT gate. You need, yeah, a NOT gate. A NOT gate basically says if it's 1, it turns to 0, and if it's 0, it turns to 1. Very simple. Um, so, we'll just go like that. And then that goes over there, and, oh crap, I don't need you, uh, that goes there, and that will be our thingy. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to, um, make three AND gates, and put all the combinations in. It's actually pretty simple. This it takes. I haven't found a way to make this smaller than it is. It's at this point pretty, pretty huge. But it's way simpler to build and way easier to memorize than the other one because there's patterns to this one. Well, the other one is pure logic, and logic can sometimes be tough. Okay, so this is goes down. I don't care about this. So I can just run this past like that. Um, first of all, we're going to go. So basically, the idea here is um, you are running a few. Uh, you have these three inputs here: this one, this one, and this one. And you need to run them run them through all possibilities of AND gates. So basically, if you have three uh, numbers and you're dividing them into 2, 3 factorial, divided by 2 factorial. This is 6 over 2, which is 3, so there are three different combinations here that you can do. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's basically it, actually. And I think I just might have messed that up. Um, excuse me for a moment. Okay, moving this one, one forward. <laughs> there. Okay, that works better. We run that into there. And that there. Okay, so we have that running into there. Then we can do something like, well, here's our other input. So let's run this down the line. And we need to put it into this one and this one. So what we're going to do is go like, oh, let's, like that, and then same thing here, um, run, 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 wait, that's not right, oh gosh, darn it. Okay, we'll run this one like this. Sorry guys, this is only my second time building one of these because I did, as I said, I didn't use it in my uh, my own computer because, I don't know, I didn't know how to do it originally and I was too lazy to figure it out. So I looked it up online and it turns out it's pretty simple. I'm just getting used to it, so it's taking me a little bit. Sorry. Okay. Hey. My scroll wheel sucks. Um, and then like that. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have this, and what these are going to do is this is going to go into a, a NOR, a NAND gate. 
or no, not an AND gate, an XOR gate. Yes, an XOR. And we built those in the last one. Oh, actually, we built two of them in the last one, and we'll be building two of them today. So it's just like that, and then you put redstone here, 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 here. And the places I notice that I forget to do them is here, here, and here. So remember those spots. Then we run that out, and we run this down here. Run it over to there, and then we build another XOR gate. And trust me, you're not going to be as fast the original time you're building all these gates. You'll get used to it. Hopefully. See, even I, I fuck up a lot too. What's my time? Hopefully I'm not over 10 minutes. Because this is going to get boring if it I am. Um, okay, run down there, and over there, and then there. And so that is output 1. So that's the subtracted number, basically. Um, and now we're going to do an OR gate. And you know, what you may be thinking to yourself is, can't you just do an OR gate by combining all the um, inputs together in one spot? And I'd be, and I'd tell you, well, yes, you can. But the problem with, uh, come on, the problem with doing that is, um, it. Oh, Jesus. The problem with doing that is, it makes it so those lines can't be used anymore. Basically, like, if you have a nor, if you don't have this gate here, if you just do an and an OR gate with them all together, the trail goes backwards, and it's just, you know, it doesn't actually, in this case, it doesn't make any difference, but it's a good thing to just try to avoid. Okay, now I'm going to install some repeaters, because they're necessary. I don't really know exactly where to install them, but I'll give it a general sh idea, and I think I'll be fine. Um, no. The thing about repeaters is they take a long time, so you don't want to use as you want to use as least as possible. Okay, so this is going to be the min menu end. This is going to be the subtrahend, and this is going to be the borrow. In case you didn't know, the menu end is the first number. The subtrahend is the one you're subtracting from, and the borrow is the the you cross out the one, you cross out the number in front of it, and put the one next to it, and then move, carry the one over. And um, this is the borrow out. If it's on, it's saying that it's carrying, it's borrowing from the number in front of it. That's hard to explain, um, but it's basically like um, this is saying that you need to cross out the number in front of it and mark it one less down. And this is the answer. If it's a zero. That means that number is zero, and if it's a one, the number is one. If you want to really understand this, I suggest you. Oh crap! It's getting dark. One second. Like I was saying, um, if you want to understand this, uh, I suggest it's actually really simple and easy to learn. Much easier than uh, uh, base ten subtraction is, which is what we do. And it, other than that, you just have to trust me. Okay, so. Menu end is 1. So 1 minus 0, and you're not borrowing anything, so effectively minus 0. So there, you're not borrowing anything because it's 1, um, and you're not, yeah, and the output is 1. Now let's say um, we're doing 1 minus 1. We are not borrowing anything because we don't need to, because it's 1 minus 1 equals 0 or not doing negative numbers here, and the output is zero because it's zero. But if we're saying, okay, let, let's, given this situation, let's say um, we had to borrow from the last number, so our number is one lower. So what we're basically doing is borrowing here and telling it that it's been borrowed from, so that means we need to mark that, and that's basically minus one, again. So it's one minus one minus one, which is negative one, but that doesn't work, so this is going to tell it we're borrowing from the number in front of it, if that makes any sense. So we're, sub we're putting that little slash through it, making the number one increment lower, and then moving the one over. So, um, so that's one minus, so that means you have one one, subtract a one from that, 
no wait, something like that. Uh, but then it's like three, basically. I I I hope that makes some sense. It's, uh, that sounded weird. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain. Like I said, if you want to understand it better, learn um, binary subtraction. Just do it on a piece of paper. That's how I figured it out. And then it made sense. So uh, I hope this is helpful. I'll be moving on to RAM next week or whenever I get to this. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oopsie. Wrong thing. Stop recording.